Oh, the fun never stops around here. Took this thing out to get groceries. I don't drive it all that often, but I've been trying to get it back in the rotation a little more. Left front brake caliper hung up about two miles from home. It's not hung up solid, but this will be the third time this has happened. So it's about to get its, what, fourth set of calipers? It's been parked for about 10 minutes, and if I had that fan on it for about three or four, wheel is 139 degrees. The disc is 165, looks like, depending on where I hit it. Caliper is 150, okay, so the disc is like 140 and the caliper is like 150. Just for reference, probably about 75 degrees today. So anyway, it looks like I'll be getting to tear all the brakes off the front of this thing and try and find some better replacement parts, I guess. The fun just never stops around here. Oh, and the reason I've got the fan on it is because I don't want it to get so hot that it cooks the wheel bearing. So there's a unitized wheel bearing up there that's like 100 or 200 bucks to replace. And so far, this thing's still on its stock bearings. The time's coming soon, but hopefully not tomorrow. Welcome back to the channel. We're here once again with my 99 Jeep Wrangler 4 liter 5 speed Sahara. That we just call a Jeep, because I just own one of them. This is your first time joining us. There is a playlist for this thing, which I will link right up here and down in the description so you can go get all caught up with the happenings if you want to follow along with this vehicle. Based on the intro, you already know why you're here. So let's get this thing picked up in the air and get down to it. Oh yeah, we got to talk about parts too. Parts, 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 parts everywhere. Brembo brakes, what? Apparently Leonardo approves. I don't think I've officially stated it, but what I'm actually trying to do here is work my way around all the different brake suppliers and find the stuff that gives me the least amount of trouble. Uh, these are not anything fancy. Uh, Brembo does a lot of OEM stuff, which I think somewhere right even on the box it says it. Yeah, OE supplier. So Brembo probably makes brakes for Corollas and everything else, and we don't even know it as the end buyer. What I can say is the rotors on the Jeep right now are Bendix rotors, and they have been fantastic. They're actually the only rotors I've ever bought that have not warped on me. I bought the Bendix rotors for the Jeep, and then within a few months I bought Bendix rotors for an Escort, which came in an auto specialties box, so who knows, but whatever. And within a few weeks they were warped in the Escort. And if you're thinking about blaming me, one, yeah, maybe, but two, that was not my Escort, so I wasn't the one driving it, and they just warped. And this has been going on for years and years, to the point that I'm getting to where if I can't find rotors that actually work, I'm gonna start ordering like two-piece racing rotors for everything and spend like $500 for a set of rotors, because I'm I'm annoyed with it. So right now, if you've been following the channel, I have StopTech and soon to be Brembo under test. In addition to all the other brands I've used over the years, AutoZone and Napa and all those guys. But these things are nothing real special. I think they were 50-ish dollars a piece. Uh, the one thing that I absolutely did want is for them to come pre-coated, you know, pre-painted, which it looks like they did. And I can't tell if that's just kind of the color they are or if they didn't do a very good job. I think it's just kind of the color that it's sort of a gunmetal gray but they are coated. They're coated down in the in the veins, they're coated on the, the hat face, they're not coated out here at the wheel, which is fine, because I always anti-seize this, and they're not coated inside either, which again is okay, because I will anti-seize the snot out of this. Looks like the coating probably didn't get in the veins. Yeah, they didn't get any coating on the inside either, so this is just a cosmetic thing. In the past, when I've painted my own, I always get down in the veins and everything else, and it just takes a million years, and it's just not worth it. And just for fun, let's compare it to one of the stop techs I ordered for the Escort. And the stop techs are uh, sold, I think, as a little bit higher market option. You know, these are slotted and everything else. But the stop techs actually are coated all the way down inside the veins. They're coated up along the hat, the inside of the hat. They also coated the outside face. So I would say, at initial impressions, I like the stop tech coating better. I will always take the ability to remove a coating versus put more on. So for some reason this coating ever gave me trouble, a grinder and a wire wheel would take that off of there in about 30 seconds versus having to tape crap off and paint it, whatever. Ultimately, it's stopping performance I'm after. So the cosmetic stuff does come second, but so far I like the stop techs over the Brembos in the same general price category. Moving on, I've had fewer issues with calipers and I've used calipers from just about everybody, AutoZone, Napa, Advance Auto, uh, Ray Bestis, you know, all, all the major guys. And I've used the stuff all the way from like $12 a piece up to uh, something like these, which are more like the, I think these were 50 or 60 bucks a piece, somewhere in there. The sole exception to the caliper troubles I've had is with my Jeep. Many moons ago, I talked to a man who was associated with the engineering group at Chrysler. This would have been in like 2005-ish when my Jeep, my Jeep's a 99, would have been a little bit more relevant. And his, his daily driver was a Liberty of 
pretty new age, would have been about a, you know, an 04, 05, something like that. He told me that the Chrysler was having issues with the phenolic pistons in the calipers seizing up. And he had to have all his calipers replaced, I think once under warranty and then once out of warranty. I was like, well, that sucks. My Jeep's fine. Well, fast forward not many more years or not many more miles and my Jeep was no longer fine. I put AutoZone calipers on it. They made it probably 20,000 miles. One of them seized up. Replaced that one, drove maybe another 20,000 miles, and now the one on the other side has seized up. And that is a small correction to the beginning of this video, is I thought it was the same side twice. It is not. It has been one side and then the other. So for the Jeep, I decided to do something different and go upmarket. The Element 3s came highly recommended all over on the internet on mostly like heavy duty trucking forums, like guys with F350s and stuff like that say they really like these calipers. That's also the path I took on the brake pads, which are not here yet. Those are power stop, which concerns me because the power stop calipers I have are garbage, but they're power stop uh, ceramic compound that's supposed to be good for heavy vehicles and towing vehicles. And the Jeep is over 4,000 pounds, so it's a pretty heavy rig. But anyway, went with these because they are all new manufacturer. They're not rebuilt. I wasn't sure if they would be coated or not. I don't think they are. Yeah, those are cast iron as well. They've been painted. So they're that, they are in fact that silver color and it won't be super garish in there like something like a red one would be so I can live with these being silver, it'll be okay. One thing I am not in love with is the apparent age of these things. Uh, all this stuff came from Rock Auto who I'm more and more having kind of a love-hate relationship with. It's late May 2021 as I'm filming this. This has a 2009 date on it, this is 2012. This caliper has been sitting around for 12 years in a warehouse. You know, I can only assume those are year dates and it makes sense, right? Good grief. How many years did this sit in a just boiling hot or freezing cold warehouse with all these rubber components in it and everything else? It's not awesome that the caliper that I got to install is half the age of the vehicle that's already eaten calipers twice. We'll try them out, we'll see how they go. They weren't overly expensive, so if this all goes horribly wrong, it just is what it is. I'm gonna make AutoZone warranty the calipers that are on it now, so I'll end up with a spare set anyway. So in 20,000 miles, if this happens again, we'll just whoop, whoop, bang out a caliper and off we'll go. Maybe that's just the thing to do with that thing if it's just known for eating calipers. The next thing to do on it is, would be to like buy new wheels and do a big brake kit on it for like $1,500. And I, I really don't need that. But that's kind of the, the next upgrade path past what I'm doing being supposedly premium parts. Something else I'm never happy to see is the old made in China. So were the Brembos for that matter. So a bunch of Chinese brakes for premium prices. Hopefully they're all okay. One thing I am gonna do is pull these boots back and get some fresh grease in there, especially Mr. 2009 guy. I can actually see that that boot's a little bit wet where the grease may have been letting go of its oil over the years. So I'm going to attempt to very carefully pop those boots back and re-grease them and get them ready for assembly and installation. Uh, good news is everything does move nice and freely. I don't feel any binding or anything. A Little bit of added grease is just for my own comfort. And these are continuous boots, meaning they're one piece all the way through the caliper. So I just push the pins out. And if I look inside the boots, I sure don't see a lot of grease. So a little extra isn't going to hurt anybody. And this is disc brake grease. It is the right stuff for the job. And I'm loading up this end because I'm going to reinstall the pins from this direction. I'm going to move you guys out of the way in just a second to see if I can actually squeeze the brush down in from the other side and kind of work some around. I kind of don't think so. I think this brush is probably too big and too malformed. I guess I can get it in there. Write your own jokes. And I kept the pins in order. I don't think they're any different, but just to be safe. For whatever reason, it's now being very difficult to get started again. It's nice and annoying. It's almost like the grease is making the boot slip to the inside of the pin. There we go. Just he-man it. The other guy in. Yeah, so I'm, I'm pushing fairly hard there. Just trying to get it back in. I think that's started. There we go. Can't say it moves any differently than it did before, but I know there's more grease in there than there used to be. All right, you get the idea? I'm gonna do the other one. Clean all this crap off and put them back in the box and wait for more parts to show up. So I got them all greased up and due to the issues I've had with the power stops, uh, which by the way, you can check all that out in the escort front brake video if you want. I will link that for you right up there and down in the description. I decided to check out the bleeders and these look good. Since I'm here, I'm just going to anti-seize them now so I don't have to worry about it later. I like to anti-seize my bleeders uh, so they don't seize. And this is also a good opportunity to just kind of inspect like if there's a bunch of metal that comes pouring out of here or something, we know we're going to have a big problem. Looks fine, looks fine. And I'll probably pop these caps and inspect those holes too. The bleeder also looks fine and the caliper looks fine. 
Uh, one thing I've learned on the Jeep is the anti-rotation features on the hose are not that strong. And I've actually had these bolts back out before. Had that happen in McDonald's drive-thru once. So I had to drive home with the parking brake. So at least on the Jeep, I don't anti-seize the banjo bolts. And in fact, I'm probably gonna lock tight them carefully. Speaking of carefully, the goal here is to not put anti-seize in your brakes, but just on the threads. And even if we do get a little bit in there, by the time these are all bled and everything, it'll be fine. So not overly worried about it, but I don't want heaps of it if I can avoid it. This guy's a little tight. It looked like whatever coating process they used, the passivation or whatever it was, actually gets down inside of these holes, which is, I guess, kind of good and kind of bad. Of course, I'm not going to get these super tight, so I'll just be cracking them free later. I think you guys will be able to see that that paint or plating or whatever is all the way down inside the threads. So hopefully that's a good thing. Only time will tell. So them duders is all ready for installation now. They also came with nice hardware kits with new bolts and everything. I think mine's still got the factory bolts in it, so I'm sure they are plenty rusty by now. Those say they're grade 10.9, so that's the right stuff. So we will probably end up using them. And we're back and ready to roll. If I'm honest, I'm hoping this is some pretty light, nice and easy wrenching for me. So I've been out here pretty much nonstop for the last week and almost nothing's been going right. I've got higher hopes for this thing because I've been at it more recently. Like I just had all this stuff apart, I think uh, three, four years ago, it hasn't been that long. And I think I actually have all the parts I need. We'll find out. I think this rotor was in pretty good condition before, but you can see from the hang up the other day, we've got a few new grooves in it and it's all plenty rusty. Uh, these did not come coated, which is one of the reasons I started buying coated rotors. But here's what I believe is our offender, AutoZone Rebuild. Uh, I will make them warranty this, it's a lifetime warranty. The last time this happened on the other side, they also warrantied the pads because it destroys the pads when the calipers lock up. And I'm gonna actually see if the warranty both calipers. We'll find out. But this should be pretty straightforward for us today, I hope. The banjo bolt on the hose is a 14, or at least today my 14 fits it pretty well. Had to kind of tap her on because everything's a little rusty. And the caliper bolts themselves are 13s. And because Jeep, there's actually enough room to put you guys in the wheel well so you can follow along and so I can beat you upside the head with the camera or with the wrench. Okay, that's my banjo bolt and it started leaking fluid, which is fine. I made mention earlier that I'm probably going to put that guy back in with some Loctite, just blue, and a bunch of brake fluid coming on out of there, which is okay because the brake fluid's uh, probably four years old as well, so it's just time to get some of it out of there anyway. It's coming out. doesn't look too terribly bad. Caliper bolts are next, which on this thing are just bolts. They're not slide pins or anything. Despite just being bolts, I usually do grease them up anyway, just to keep them nice and anti-seized. If we've been living right, this caliper will just jump off of there. And when it does, the rotor should almost fall off. Yeah, I can see my rotor's already loose, which is good. So when this cooled back down, it released, which is not unexpected. And of course it wasn't seized solid before. All right, she's out of there. Let's let her hang out in the drain pan. Continue to drain all that brake fluid on out of there. Here's the... Here's... And Brass Instrument Day is continuing on at Max's workshop. Well... Oh! Mm-hmm. Kick it! Damn on it. It's either embrace it or go crazy, right? You do have to wonder who says go out on the front porch and do that though, which is what's going on. Somebody's parents actually did that. So this is the part in the video where I do you guys a solid. But for some odd reason, you're the first person to try and get the rotors off of one of these. You're gonna be in for a rough time. This holds true for I think Ram trucks of this period too, probably some other stuff. These rotors free solid to the hubs behind them. They'll rust right to them. The first time I did this, first time I did this job, I bought this puller, which is the only thing that would work to get them off of there. This is an OTC puller. It is number 6980 and it rules. The way this works is you just have these adjustable little sheet metal locks. You would slip that guy behind the rotor, tighten it up against the axle stub and pop it off. 
I fought with the first rotor I did on this thing for, I wanna say like three or four hours. Ordered this guy and it was like a five minute thing and it was done. Uh, not the cheapest tool ever, but worth what it costs. I will link it in the description. But ever since that day, I have anti seized my rotors. So, boop, out she comes. And in fact, I am gonna spend some time cleaning up that flange again. So it looks like some of the paint from the rotor is transferred and she's looking a little dry anyway. It's definitely time for more anti seize I'm also going to clean up these faces where the pads themselves ride. The new pads came with some sheet metal clips, but I don't think the Jeep actually uses them. I may study it for a little bit and see if that's something I actually want to do. Mine actually aren't too badly worn. Sometimes these get like big grooves worn in them. I've kind of ground these down before, but I don't want to get too aggressive with them because the more you take off of them, the worse things get. So I'm probably just going to hit them with a wire brush and a little bit of brake clean just to clean them up. Then I'll hit that hub face probably with the die grinder with a wire wheel on it to get it nice and cleaned up. So I think I am going to touch these up with the wire wheel. Uh, not a very aggressive one though. I just want to kind of polish them. So they're just a little bit rustier than I would like. So now it's my turn to make lots of noise. <laughs> All right, so that's all looking a good bit better. It is important to keep these faces clean so you don't warp your rotors. So if there's crap around here and you tighten it down, it'll pull your rotor in a way in which you probably don't want. And if you don't want warped brakes, then you gotta install them right the first time. Also make sure you get this flange because the hat sits down over that. You don't want that resting up on you. All right, all in all, let's say she's looking pretty good. There is considerably more wear on the knuckle assembly right down there. You can see it's kind of dish where the pads have been riding on it. There's kind of another angle on it. You can see where it's just been rubbing. There's a touch of that going on up here at the top too, but not as severe. The fix for this is to replace these knuckle assemblies. And they're like $400 a piece. I suppose you could have them welded up and ground down or whatever. I'm going to get my calipers and my brake shoes out and study the clips they sent to see if maybe it'll help some of that. I'm not sure where they install or how. So here's what we've got. These are little shim clips that go from... I think that's 10, 15, 20, and 25 thousandths. And I'm aware of vehicles that use these, but I, as far as I know, I've never had one that should have had them. And I think the goal here, you know, eh, is to screw up my nice little piles, is that you clip them in and adjust the, the lateral play. I think mostly is an anti-rattle, but I suppose in theory, this could also be a nicer surface for the pads to ride on. I will probably experiment with these a little bit and see if anything even looks remotely like it should work that way. Yeah, I think they clip on more or less like so and just try and soak up some slack, I guess. Those are 225s and I can tell you that at least on this side, that's not gonna fit. So let me continue to experiment. So a 10,000 shim installed in the bottom of each of them. Tighten them up uh, pretty nicely. There's just a, a little bit of kind of wiggle jiggle to them now. This guy, if I'm honest, could probably use about 20. But the problem there is I don't think I could actually get the caliper reinstalled because it kind of has to, you know, swing on. So there's a, a fork feature at the bottom that goes over these. So the caliper assembly, when it's loaded, just pivots in. You know, the same way I took it off, pivots out. So I guess that's probably how those things work. And I guess I'm going to use them that way. If it's a huge mistake, then, well, brakes just slow you down. Next step is I'm going to go ahead and load the pads into the caliper. On my stuff, I like to take a little bit of disc brake grease and lubricate the face of the piston and kind of around it too, as well as the bottom side. I suppose it's only the bottom if I do it that way, but you know, in here. And also this forward face just a little bit. And also down in the piston a fair bit. Now I do this for two reasons. One, it helps act as an anti-chatter or anti-rattle. So if the pads can move around a little bit in the calipers, they should just be quieter. The other reason I do it is as an anti-seize. So when the day comes to get these things out, they're not rusted in place. We want to be pretty sure we're putting the right pads in it because from here on out, it's a bit greasy to redo it. You know, not that you couldn't. There's one. It just snaps in the piston, which is why I do the inside of the piston. And this guy just snaps over the top. I guess what I actually wanted to grease was those. Got ahead of myself. Yeah, so I just want to touch right there, really. And that is just for those to load onto. I may need a screwdriver to get them started. I guess not. There are little holes that there are little pins in the back of the pads drop into. Kind of locks that guy on. Take a minute and wipe off any extra grease just so it's not hanging out. Take the plug out so I don't forget to do it later. Time to get the hub face all anti seized get our new rotor on and hang the caliper. There's no need to get super crazy here. 
because any excess is just going to fling out and consequently fling uh, straight into our brakes. So what I've got here is probably 20 and I will just paint it out. Also, I don't mind getting just a little bit on my wheel studs. This keeps them from getting rusty on me. Make sure we get around the edge too because the hat will overlap it. Let's get our rotor slipped in. Like so. I'm just gonna see about retaining it with a couple lug nuts. So we're here, we'll just check it and make sure it, no interference. Actually, the backing plate I think is rubbing it a little bit. I'm gonna run it by the steering knuckle. So today is the day that I learned that there was a mid-year model change on 99 Wranglers with which unit bearing they use and which rotor they use. I did not know there were two different rotors. I bought rotors for this thing before and just said 99 Wrangler and they showed up and wore the right thing. Well, these Brembos are not. These are actually three millimeters too tall and they were making hard contact when I attempted to install them. The next fun thing I got to learn today is that Rock Auto's return policy and their procedure is a bunch of BS. Since I opened the box and attempted to put this on, and since I'm an honest man, I replied to the little questionnaire truthfully and said, yeah, I opened it and tried to put it on. They said, oh, it's used part, can't take it back. This was like a $60 rotor and nothing on their website, at least as regards this part number, indicates that there's any kind of model change or anything. They make it almost impossible to contact them. I found an email address that might just end up in nothing. Shot him an email and said, hey, you know, I understand these things are bound to happen. Hopefully we can come to a conclusion where I don't bear the full financial brunt of your mistakes and we'll see where that goes. Uh, the next frustrating part is, I don't think I've said it in this video, but right now I have no driving vehicle and it's been that way for uh, tomorrow. Yeah, I think tomorrow will be a week. So for a week, everything I own has been down. Uh, so I'm left with only mail order parts. So to get replacement parts of any quality, my only other option was once again, freaking rock auto because the stuff at AutoZone is just AutoZone junk. Summit didn't have what I wanted, none of that crap. So I'm in the middle of having a problem with these guys. I had to do more business with them anyway. Uh, the thing that really sucks is presently I've gotten away with this because it was a uh, holiday weekend when this all started. And believe it or not, uh, right now I am still on work from home from COVID times. And as far as I can tell, that might last forever. My boss doesn't really seem to care if I show up at the facility or not. However, the big boss has a meeting scheduled in a few days that I have to attend and I'm not going to have the parts in time to have a vehicle to do that. So now I have to do something I really don't want to do. And that is take these nice new pads out of my nice new caliper, take the torn up pads out of my busted caliper, put them in this thing and put my old completely torched rotor back on just so I have something to drive for the next week until parts get here for stuff. It's all just ultra frustrating and everything I have been touching for the last week has been like this. Wrong parts because of somebody else, wrong parts because of me, brand new parts that are broken and defective, and just on it goes. This is a, just becoming a nightmare. I'm hoping to make this whole situation a uh, from zero to a swing up to three running and moving uh, within about the next month. This is becoming top priority because this is becoming really, really annoying. This one snuck up on me. I, didn't expect it. This thing to eat calipers for the third time, but is what it is. Anyway, I could continue to ramble and moan all day, but it ain't going to get the work done. So I'm just going to get something I'm not proud of doing slapped back on there. And when the rest of the parts show up, we'll do this all over again. Yeah, this is how this is supposed to look. No drag, no sound, just nice. So yeah, three millimeters makes a big difference. Why in the hell Jeep needed to redesign it to be stupid is anybody's guess. I'm going to put this thing back together and I'll bring you guys back for bleeding it because we shouldn't need to do that twice. I believe I mentioned before the locking features on these brake hoses aren't that good. It's just that square hex that lines up on that shelf on the caliper. And at least with the old ones, there was enough slot between the two that it could become loose. And that is not something we like. So there I've got that guy assembled with new copper washers. Kind of as carefully as I can, I'm going to apply some blue Loctite to this. Just kind of get it worked in the threads because, you know, I'd prefer to not have this in my brakes. But we are going to, you know, be flushing this in a moment with a whole bunch of brake fluid when we bleed it. So this is not normally recommended, but for this situation it is. There I've got the banjo bolt just snug. That's how far I can move the line. <laughs> this is a really crap locking system. It could also just be these hoses. I never even thought of that. We'll compare them to the new hoses I've got over in the bench since we're going to have another crack at some of this anyway. For right now, we're just going to get the, that guy PFT pretty freaking tight just before it snaps off. Hopefully that's about it. 
uh, trying to rescue this sock. It's going to be a good time. Also, I may come back and retorque that in a few days. Finally, and since as usual, I am the one man show, I've got a piece of quarter inch fuel line on this with just a granny loop in it to act as a check valve so I can one person bleed this. The idea being that the air and fluid will get down here and then it makes a trap where only fluid can be and air can't come back up. That's the theory anyway. I'm gonna start doing it this way. I do have a vacuum bleeder I can use, but I'd prefer not to. I would prefer to just do it this way. Also, I bought some clear tubing that would make this more cinematic, but it only fits GM stuff apparently. So I just filled the reservoir back up and I'm kind of hoping this guy will sit here and just gravity bleed a little bit. So I've got the bleeder cracked open with the hose geometry such that it is. I don't know that it will do that. So I think I am gonna have to put my foot on the brakes. I think I'm also gonna have to zip tie that hose on. All right, so I'm gonna go pump the brakes a few times and hopefully you guys see some fluid coming out of there. There we go, see some fluid. It looked like it had some air in it. Looks like that did too. Might have as well. I think we're actually good. Yeah, that zip tie did not hold on for very long. Leader's closed. I'm gonna go see what I think about the pedal. So it came up with a nice firm pedal but it was kind of too stagey or notchy at first. So I am gonna put the vacuum bleeder on it a little bit. And I do need to use this little adapter guy. And the way I understand it is you wanna be pushing the vacuum bleeder button when you open the bleeder. So the whole time the bleeder's open, you wanna be on the button. And just for drama, I put a little knot in it that maybe we can see something happen through. So here we go. It all looks like it has air in it, but you know, it could be pulling air from around the bleeder and everything else. Check the master cylinder level. Let's give her another shot. Yeah, I'm pretty willing to believe it's just pulling air around the boots and the threads. I don't think there's that much air in the caliper. I think she's going to be just fine until I can have somebody help me manually bleed it. So I need you guys to take one more for the team for me and watch this thing and see if it drips when I put my foot on and off the brake a few times. Just to be safe. So it did seem like it's pulling a lot of air. Here we go. Pedals rock hard. That's interesting. Ah, oh, boy. All kinds of pedal. About as hard as I can push her. I think if she was gonna leak, she'd be leaking. Well, I watched over your shoulder and it looks pretty good. I didn't see any leaking. It's pretty cool. You can see the hose flex and stuff. That's neat. I'm gonna put the wheel and stuff back on it, get the thing back out of the shop and wait for more parts to show up. All right, so let's try this again with parts that should fit. These are Raybestos Element 3 rotors. I've already measured them and they come up to what I believe I will need. They are also fully coated and they were about half the price of the Brembo's, which is good because I got a feeling Rock Auto is gonna stiff me for about 60 bucks on those by the time this is done. Good times, good times. We're gonna have a totally separate video about that. But here is what we are working with now. As I said, these are fully coated. So even the braking surface is coated. So I'm not sure what the break-in procedure on these is like. I will probably go look that up. But I do like that even down in all the vents and everything, these are fully painted, plated, whatever you want to say. So they should look nice, perform nice, hopefully for a good long time to come. So now the only thing left to do is get everything torn back off the Jeep, throw the right parts on, and hopefully it works out for us. Let's get to it and find out. So let's try this again. I'm not expecting big dramas here. Same old caliper, I've just got it sitting on a five gallon bucket, which by the way, a five gallon bucket is great for calipers in most cases. This disc is nice and loose because of course it is. I just had it off like five days ago. So the only thing to do now is to load the new pads in. 
I'm going to properly grease up all the caliper interfaces that I did not grease up very well last time. I'm going to use the new bolts because why not? And that should be about that. I'll probably bring you guys back when I get to loading the caliper onto the hub uh, just to see if those shims are going to screw me up with installation or anything. I'm pretty sure it'll just fold right on but it shouldn't be a big deal. Actually the first thing we should do is double check our rotor. I did measure it and it seemed fine but you don't know until you know right? So let's do that right quick. Get old and busted off of there. New freshness slid on. Take a couple lug nuts. All right that is just snug. Ah yes. No rubs. Spins right. This is the guy we want. Sweet. So now I'm going to do the other stuff that I just talked about. All right then, let's get back to where we once belonged here and get this guy on in. I hope. Ah crap, might have to spread the caliper. Yep, kind of forgot that I'd driven on these calipers so the pistons are not 100% homed. I don't have one of those little comp piston compressor toolies, so you never really needed one. Hopefully I can just squeeze it. If not, I can get a C-clamp out, I guess. Well, hopefully that was just enough to trick it into cooperating. It was not. Yep, C-clamp, block of wood, piston on back end, which means I've got to take this pad off again. If you're counting, this will be the third time. And it's boiling hot out here, so I'm going to get a fan. So if you hear it, sorry. It sounds like a big thunderstorm is about to move in, so maybe that'll cool things down a little bit. Kind of doubt it. Probably just make it even more humid. You're on Max's weather and garage. Okay, giant C-clip engaged. I am watching the piston to make sure it's moving, which it is, and I just heard the master cylinder go skeet skeet i'm hoping there's enough room in the master that this doesn't create a problem yep i think we'll be okay and this isn't taking much force at all by the way if you were to do this and it was i would tell you to stop so everything moved really nice and freely also this is not a universal trick for every caliper some of them like ratchet and screw together and all kinds of weird stuff i just know on this one there's nothing fancy about it let's see about getting this pad reinstalled again Trying not to get grease everywhere again. Okay, is it actually where it's supposed to be? Yep, it's actually engaged. All right, let's try all this nonsense again. Wipe grease all over my rotor. Okay, like the 10 millionth times the charm, right? There we go. Quite a bit more slack now. I will almost bet. <laughs> I'll almost bet the forks on the bottom weren't lined up. So really, once again, I need to be where you guys are. Hang on. Since I'm getting annoyed with the project, I forgot that I'd have to retreat those pins. So these pins were sticking too far out before. That's why it wasn't going on. So hopefully I will have a little easier time now. Let's see if that's true. Yep, helps to not be a complete idiot. And that fits uh, pretty nice and tight. I don't think I could shim it anymore if I wanted to. So cool. Next thing I'm gonna do is see about getting one of these bolts started. And for whatever reason, I always struggle with this too. So good times. But the idea here is I'm gonna get one started and then grease up the other one and get it going. Also, these bolts have uh, different hex heads on them. The factory ones are 13s, these are 12s. But these have like a gigantic uh, flange built into the top of them, which I tend to like better anyway. Okay, so that's started. I believe I said this before, but I like to grease these. If I get as lucky with that guy taking thread, I'll be. Well, the camera loves to make me a liar. I will continue to be happy about it. Run this top guy back out. And everything just moved when I did it. So, fun times. We'll hit him up with some grease. Got my bucket out of the way now that I'm reasonably confident the caliper's not going to fall off. I'm sure these bolts have a torque rating, but PFT is usually what I go for. I would guess these are probably 25-ish. See an opportunity for just a little more grease on that guy. Everything spins very nicely. I'm gonna go pump the brake one time just to get the piston reset. The first one felt bad, but all subsequent ones feel good. Let's make sure we're still free out here. We are not, there we go. Okay. So just as a drag of new brakes and I can see it's already doing whatever with that coating right there on the inside ridge. 
So I imagine the thing to do here is just uh, drive that coating off, but I will double check the instructions just to be sure. I'm gonna say this is all fine. I'm gonna get the wheel back on it and get it buttoned up. Shouldn't need to do anything to the hydraulic system because we left the caliper alone. On the other side, I will need to do all that again. And although I think the vacuum bleeder was working okay, I do also have a pressure bleeder that I've never tried before. So on the other side, I'm gonna vacuum it down just like I did over here. And then when I get all done, I'll probably wheel this thing out of the shop and go around it with the pressure bleeder too and just try it just to see how it'll go. So unless something goes dramatically wrong on the passenger side, that is probably gonna be the next segment you see. And I lied, I forgot I bought some clear hose so we can have a more cinematic view of a poor man's self-bleeding setup. So I'm just gonna pump the brakes a few times and we'll watch the magic out there together. That was one, two, three, four, Five. I actually saw the master take fluid that time and I think I heard something in the pan. All right, I'm gonna go take a look, see what you're seeing. Looks like things are going okay and as designed. I see there's an air bubble in the tube right here, which is what we want. This is all solid fluid up here. It's also kind of coming off the bleeder, which is bad. I cut this hose shorter than I should have. I didn't realize it would stay so curly for so long. Okay, I'm gonna give it one or two more pumps. Refill the master before I do. All righty. Tighten this guy on down while I get the vacuum bleeder set up just to kind of finish things up. And it looks like that did a pretty nice job. I actually don't even see any air in that anymore. Poor man's bleeder kit, just a chunk of hose. And actually, I'm going to pump them up a few times just to kind of leak check and check it out on camera and make sure everything's looking good. Make sure we don't have any big squirts or drips or anything. Make sure we get a good firm pedal. Oh yeah. Feels good. Now we shall vacuum bleed, which you guys have already seen. So next time we come back, it'll be pressure bleeding. So I vacuum bled the passenger side and honestly, everything looked pretty good. It didn't pull nearly as much air as it did when I did the driver's side. And I think it's because I had the bleeder just cracked open too much over here. But all the same, we're still gonna hit it with the pressure bleeder because why not? I've never used it for this. May as well give it a shot. The theory behind how this is supposed to work is you put whatever fluid you wanna transfer in this thing, pump it up and there's a pressure gauge on it, which seems defective it's not at zero anymore but whatever it doesn't really matter anything greater than nothing will still move fluid and then they sell vehicle specific adapters for your master cylinder and a lot of those adapters work for you know plenty of vehicles like this is the chrysler one for like a 20 year period of time so i didn't mind spending the i think 30 bucks or whatever on this thing at the time what i'm going to do is i'm just going to use this as a pressure source i'm not going to put any fluid in it you may be able to see this hose is kind of pink. That is because I've used this thing to transfer just boatloads of ATF. And as soon as I'm done here, it's got to pump some more ATF. So I don't really want to have to clean it up and cross contaminate everything and all that. So I'm just going to use it as a very low pressure air source. And I will monitor the fluid level in the master cylinder back there on my own. I won't count on this guy to actually pump it out. The nice thing about this system is if you want to do a brake fluid flush, all you have to do is put like a quarter brake fluid in this thing, screw it onto the master cylinder, pump it up, and then just go around the whole vehicle and just crack the bleeders until clean fluid runs out. You really don't have to worry about anything. I also think this thing would be handy like in a professional shop, and that's usually where you see tools more like this, uh, where you could just fill this with brake fluid knowing that in a day or two you're just going to turn that brake fluid over all the time, which I am not. Uh, if I were to fill that with brake fluid, that'd be a lifetime supply and it would just start drawing moisture and it would be bad. Also worth mentioning, I have customized mine with a shutoff valve down here, because otherwise you have no way to stop the flow of anything just until it's out of pressure, or I guess you could crack the lid. And the kits just have a hose on them with a corresponding fitting. So I will get this all set up, then we're gonna run this thing out of the garage and do this in the driveway, just because if I'm dealing with pressurized brake fluid, I don't want it in the shop and I want it close to a garden hose so I can rinse stuff off if something goes bad. Okay, and you can see I've got it all set up. This thing still does wanna pump up some of the ATF that was still in it and I clearly don't want that. So I've just got the hose held up with a little magnetic hook on the hood. 
hoping that it'll just kind of stand down in the reservoir and all I get is pressure. I pumped it up just a little bit, not a lot, and we'll probably start over in the passenger side and see how that works out for us. So how I attempted to film the passenger side resulted in the hottest of garbage. So we're over here at the driver's side and I'm gonna try and catch it again. So what I'm gonna do here is get my wrench on the bleeder and I've already got the pressure pot pumped up, uh, quite a bit actually, it doesn't really need all that much. Get my hose stuffed on it. Now when I crack the hose, it should push some fluid, or crack the bleeder rather. And there it goes. It just passed just a couple of air bubbles. A couple more. That's looking pretty good. So in reality, it is about as dramatic as it looks like it is on camera. Just put the thing on, pump it up, and away you go. So I think now the only thing left to do is go drive the thing and see if it stops. Before we do that, you'll see there's some bubbling here. That is because the fitting up here is not all the way tight. I didn't put any kind of thread sealer or anything on it, so it's just kind of bubbling its way along. Nothing to be concerned about. But what I did learn on the other side is to relieve the pressure out of this thing. If you do it at the master cylinder, you have to be really careful because it'll just explode brake fluid back up. That did not happen to me because I was expecting it. This time, I'm going to relieve it back here, especially since there's nothing in here but ATF. Yeah, that was totally drama free. Yep, that's the way you definitely want to do it. Now we're going to go take it for a drive. So I don't presently have an awesome way to record drive alongs. We'll try this and see how it goes. Don't mind reverse grinding. Hopefully there's not too much wind noise for you either. Got the windows down, it's a little toasty today. First thing is we have a really good brake pedal feel. Uh, the second thing is the brakes aren't that great. I think that coating's gonna have to break in. And I did look it up and there isn't really a special break in procedure with these. Uh, just sort of bed them in like usual. So right now I'm going about 50. I'm gonna stand on them to put a little heat in them. Alrighty, so that peeled it back to about 20. I have a motorcycle behind me now about a quarter mile back, so I'll probably turn off soon and let him pass. And he passed me, and he passed me in a no passing zone at an intersection where he's lucky he didn't get killed. Anyway, got a nice calm road here. I'm sure you can see how windy it is now, out in the cornfields, God's country. So pedal feels still a little funky. I mean, good, but funky. I'm gonna roll her up to about 50 again and stand on them. All right, so it's actually 60. It wasn't a lock up, but it wasn't a lot from it. Got them good and warm. I don't think it pulled or anything. I'm gonna come up here to the next main drag, get back on it, give her some cool down time and just kinda keep doing the same thing over and over. And we might get out and just have a quick look to see how they're doing. Yeah, the brake feels still not very good. I don't know, maybe I'm being too harsh because I'm looking for trouble. Yeah, I'm going about 55. I'm just going to lay into them softly. Yeah, it took about 15, 20 miles an hour off there. And feel okay. It's pulling straight stop sign coming up I'll have to stop for. So I'll be real gentle and then we'll probably just cruise a little bit let them cool down some more. Yeah, got one last place to whip dip on around. I think I'm going to take advantage. And that was a pretty aggressive break, which is good. We kind of needed one. Did not think about the hill I was just on that I now have to back out of. Well, We're not dead, so that's good. We'll 
we'll get out our real soft and gentle like up here for this stop again. I think you're starting to feel a little bit better. We'll have another real soft, gentle stop up here. But I'm probably gonna let it cruise for a while and just stand on them. I'm running about 60 here because I'm trying to make some time on the guy behind me. I'm going to stand on him. That felt pretty good and I heard some tires screeching so definitely putting him to work. I'm getting to be a little more traffic out than I'd like to for this kind of thing. I'm just going to cruise for a bit and let the brakes cool down. Uh, same guy's still behind me, so I don't want to get rear-ended or freak anybody out. That was a pretty aggressive stop anyway. So this is the deal. That's how I bet in brakes. Just roll around for a bit, get on them, let them cool, get on them. Blah, blah, blah. Would like to pull in somewhere where we can take a look at them and see if that plating or coating or whatever's off yet. I still don't feel awesome, but I think some of that's in my mind, just wanting them to not feel awesome. They're looking okay. I can see that plating wearing off and I can see some like heat checking. Wheels are warm but not hot. Let's come check the other side out. Other side's looking about the same. This wheel might be just a little bit cooler. Yeah, I don't think all that plating's off yet, so I'm just gonna keep driving it around and see how it feels. Up at this stop up here, I'm just gonna kind of do my normal stop. So just driving like regular and see how it goes. Not real sure where we're gonna stop, but soon. But I do tend to be a pretty defensive driver, so I don't usually wait till the last second to just stand on my brakes or anything. She rolled up nice. Let's put some beef to her. Marked a rear tire on that ship. So I've stood on them hard enough a couple times now that I can actually smell them, which even Bray Bestis says is just fine. This combination of pads and rotors kind of smells like peanut butter, which is weird. It's been a quick minute since I last stood on them, and this is kind of the best road for it. So I'm going to stand on them again, hopefully without much traffic. Once these guys pass, I'll probably try and wheel her up to about 70. Is that a, like a Valari? Oh, something weird in Chrysler. I approve. All right, that's 65. Now it's panic stop down to nothing. And I don't smell them this time. So maybe we got everything cooked off. I do know I'm not going to want to stop it again that hard anytime soon, because that had to be a lot of heat. 65 to zip. So now I think the move is just to drive for a little bit, let them cool down, then I'll probably take it back home. We'll catch back up in the shop. So I got the thing on home. It seems to be stopping okay. Like it's a completely safe to drive, but I don't think the brakes are where they should be yet. And it looks like that coating on the rotors is just gonna take forever to wear off. Uh, you can still see some of the, like the crosshatch pattern in the rotors too. That's all completely fine. I think those pads may be significantly harder than I'm used to. So maybe that's just it. We'll see. If I don't like the pads, then I'll have the AutoZone ones to trade back onto it because I'll make them warranty them because of that hung up caliper of theirs. Anyway, I did pressure bleed the brakes again, just to double check, because when I got home, I noticed the left front wheel was significantly warmer than the right front. Uh, neither one was hot, 
but I just wanted to check it out and see. They both had like just little tiny, tiny, tiny little amounts of air in them. And then it dawned on me that the fat bastard driving this thing sits on the left side. So that might be why the left front brake works a little bit harder, just because that's where the driver sits. And the thing's so short, it's only got a 96 inch wheelbase. So eh, maybe plausible. Anyway, stops okay. I'll keep driving it and I'll update you guys if there's any actual problem, but I don't think there is. I think we got her straightened out for the time being. So as always guys, I wanna thank you for stopping in for this video. We'll catch you on the next one. I'm Max, that's Saddington Bear, and we make videos like this all the time. Here are a couple links to some other videos we've made, and we really appreciate you guys stopping in.